usually here in Ghana, especially with um, the cases of Abna Koko, as a matter of fact, if I should mention, um, she's one of the people who have actually come out to tell us what she is going through. Mm. But like I mentioned, it is something or a topic which is very, very underrated. We don't take mental health very serious at here all. in Ghana, not at all, yes. But usually people who are bold enough come out to tell us. But most of the cases, we don't even know what people are going through. Mm. So how do we identify someone who is going through mental health? Um, we don't need to identify someone who's going through mental health. Right. They, as, as an individual, you need to know yourself, to know the changes That's that true. occur, to know you're going through something. Okay. Um, when you, if your question is regards to maybe family members or close people around them yes there are ways that you can tell that somebody is going through something um, usually you can tell because their patterns will change everybody has a pattern every human being has a pattern we're, we're creatures of habits we do the same things all the time right. um, sometimes you'll try to be spontaneous and do something different right. but those ones happen like once in a while so typically typically Everybody has a pattern. They have a sleep time, wake up time. They have the way they behave, whether they are a happy person, whether they are a calm person, whether they are um, introverted, extroverted. Everybody has a pattern. Mm -hmm. Usually when something is wrong, you find that patterns will change. Um, sometimes even your sleep changes when mm -hmm. you are going through a face um, a mental face, if you may, mm -hmm. because it means that something is wrong. It means that um, you're going through something that you don't feel good about right. or it's not working very well for you as a person. So in identifying if somebody close to us, a family member, a close friend is going through um, a mental health phase or situation, patterns will change. You find somebody who's really outgoing and suddenly they don't want to go out. You know, they just want to be indoors. It can, if it's happening one time or for a short period, it's fine. Right. But if it goes on for longer than normal, normal. then there's a problem. Okay. These are some of the ways that we can identify Identifying. when something is wrong. Okay. But otherwise, as a person, you should know yourself. You should know who you are. You should know the things that make you happy, things that don't make you happy. You should know what you do when you're angry. You should know what your emotions are. So when things change, you should be able to tell if you are sadder than normal and there's no particular reason why. If you're sad because you lost a parent, you lost a job, you don't have money, this and that, and you can attribute the sadness to a reason, then you're good. But if you cannot attribute it to a reason, everything is okay, but you just wake up and today I'm just sad. And you brood in that moment for a long time, it becomes a problem. Okay. However, my focus is more on creatives. creatives. Because creatives, unfortunately, are on the losing end of the mental health conversation. Right. They go through so much. And they go through so many faces when it comes to mental health. They do so much. They take on so much. Creatives will go through burnouts. Creatives will go through depression. Because typically, creatives want to create all the time. And in moments that they are not creating, they feel depressed. They feel like, oh, it's not happening, you know. Um, there's a, there's a, you know, your brain is split into two parts. Right. There's the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere. Neurologists have made us understand that the left part of your brain is the logical part of your brain as well, the mathematics and right. all the logical reasoning lies. The right side, however, is where creativity is. And you find that in history, all of the creative people, the Michelangelo's, the Vincent van Gogh's, all of the creative people um, would operate for the most part from the right hemisphere of their brains. The right hemisphere is also where all the depression, all the anxiety, all the mood disorders and everything lies. So it becomes a case of um, typically if you're playing a lot in a certain area, you get the good from the area and you equally get the bad. So a creative can access a mood disorder quicker than um, a logical person, a left brained person, you know, people who are praised from the left hemisphere of their brains, right. they want access, mood disorders, and all of the anxiety, all of that as quickly 
as a creative ward. Yeah. Also because creatives, um, sometimes depending on what you do in the industry, um, you can have a period where you go through a lot of different phases of stress. Right. Um, creatives can experience burnout. Creatives can experience a lot of depression because like I said early on, when a creative is not creating, they feel useless. Yes. They feel like, what am I doing? And it's so easy for them to fall into depression that way. Mm -hmm. And so part of my campaign really is to let creators understand that all of these feelings are very, very normal. Mm -hmm. However, it requires that they seek help. Yeah. Because as much as when I say normal, I don't mean normal in... Um, in its meaning, I mean that it's okay that these feelings come to you. It's okay that you feel that way, but don't let it stay with you. Don't let it remain with you. You need to seek help. And creatives go through the harshest realities. realities. I mean, on social media, you find all the bullying that happens right. to them on a regular basis. Right. And these are human beings with feelings. They will feel right. it. Um, they will deal with it. But how they deal with it is also another conversation right. altogether. Um, creatives will go through sometimes imposter syndrome right. where they feel like they are not adequate. Right. They feel like even though they are able to be their best selves, creating the best of what they can, when they are done, they still feel like it's inadequate. Right. They feel like this is not enough. But I, I, I should be able to do better. I can do better. And then there's always all the competition that happens. You know, people fall back. There's a lot of addiction in the creative space. Right. People fall back on all kinds of things to survive and save face. Right. And by survival, I don't even mean, you know, financially or how they do physically. I mean mentally. Yeah, people fall back on drugs and alcohol mm -hmm. and all kinds of things the addiction. just to survive. Right. You know, and addiction is a mental yeah. health condition. So really, um, my campaign is for creatives to understand that they are in a space where it's so easy mm -hmm. to access all of these mental health conditions yeah. and it is not um, it should not be a problem. Okay. There is always a help available. They just need to first of all acknowledge that this is how I'm feeling. This is what I'm going through. Right. This is what I can do about it. Right. And then move on from mm. that. Right. But with what